Welcome back to another episode of Catfish Combat with Joel. Uh, so it is a day the Lord has made. Um, it is extremely cold outside. It's about 24 degrees right now. We've had a really bad cold front come through this week and this weekend. Uh, also had some sickness going through the family. So not going to get a lot of fishing done this week or this weekend. So I'm going to do something a little different. So I was kind of talking about this uh, a little earlier. I said about probably a month, month and a half ago about doing some teaching sessions. So I'm going to start with this session and it's going to be basically Catfish 101, okay? But if you're new to this sport or kind of a novice uh, cat fisherman, this is a good place to start. So the first thing I'm going to go over, the first lesson is a catfish species overview, okay? So I'm going to go over the three primary catfish you find in North America waters, which are the channel catfish, the blue catfish, and the flathead catfish. And I'm going to break down for each of them their appearance, so their physical appearance and how you can identify each one, uh, their size and their characteristics. And what I mean by that is the typical size you would find, what is a trophy class fish, how they behave differently as they get to different sizes, because their size actually does determine what they feed on and what they do. There is a difference. Uh, the foods that they eat. And then finally, this basically a very uh, a very basic seasonal pattern overview for each one. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's get into it. Hope you enjoy this. The first fish we're gonna discuss is the channel catfish. The channel catfish has a dark olive green or black top with a lighter olive green body and a pale underbelly. They have a forked tail, which enables them to achieve high bursts of speed, and they have a rounded anal fin. This is one of the major things that distinguishes them from the blue catfish, as blue catfish have a rectangular anal fin. Baby channel catfish also have many black spots on their bodies, which they will lose as they get older. The average channel catfish that I see on the Tennessee River Channel Lakes in Alabama is about two to five pounds. A 20 plus pound fish could be considered by many people to be a trophy class channel catfish. The current Alabama state record channel catfish is 40 pounds and was caught in 1967 at Inland Lake in North Central Alabama. The current world record channel catfish is 58 pounds and was caught in 1964 at Santee Cooper Reservoir in South Carolina. Channel catfish have an incredible sense of smell, and they can smell minute amounts of blood or fish scents in the water from some impressive distances. This is also a trait for all three catfish species as well. Channel catfish are omnivorous, eating both bait fish or prey and aquatic vegetation, particularly when they are young. Once channel catfish reach adulthood, however, they become almost exclusively predatory and carnivorous. Channel catfish have an incredible memory, and their ability to be conditioned to locate food at the right times and right places is amazing. Attaches an article from a college professor in Canada who trained a pond of channel catfish to respond to the words fish fish, which would result in him feeding them fish pellets. It's quite an interesting and entertaining read as over a few years he conditioned these fish that basically when he would say the phrase fish fish, all the channel catfish would rush to the surface and come towards him for feeding. Lastly, contrary to what some of you may have heard, none of the American catfish discussed here are poisonous. They do have sharp bones in their side and dorsal fins, but that is all they are. They are much sharper when the catfish are younger, but become dull as the catfish get older. They can still puncture your skin, but they're not poisonous at all and would just leave a wound similar to being poked by a large needle. Next, we'll discuss the common food sources for channel catfish. Their primary forage foods are both gizzard and threadfin shad, bluegills and sunfish, snails, clams, crayfish, and insects. Additionally, they will eat aquatic plants, algae, and grains when young or if other food sources are scarce. For our seasonal pattern discussion, we'll start with the fall. In the fall, channel catfish switch over to feeding mode to prepare for winter, and they will move up into creeks, around bridges, submerged timber, and flats to actively hunt for bait fish. Focus on these areas in the mornings and early evenings as channel catfish are pretty active throughout those times. During some warmer or high atmospheric pressure days, they may push into deeper holes just outside of the creeks, so focus on those areas during those times. In the winter, like most other fish, channel catfish will push into deep water to avoid the cold air. They will seek the most comfortable water that they can find, so focus on deep holes near their fall feeding grounds. They will still feed, but their metabolism slows way down and they won't travel far to feed as they try to conserve energy. In the springtime, the channel catfish bite gets very hot, and they will feed in the same areas that they were feeding on in the fall, but they will usually stay in shallow water for most of this season. 
Focus on submerged timber, stumps, rocks, and shallow flats. During the summer, channel catfish follow a pattern that is a combination of what they were doing in the fall and the winter. During the day, channel catfish will occupy deeper water that's more comfortable. Then they will move into the creeks and in the early morning and evening times to feed. Next up is the mighty blue catfish. If there was a fish in American waters that's the bully on the playground and regularly beats up all the other fish and takes their lunch money, it's the blue catfish. This fish is one of the meanest, angriest fish I have ever caught. Blue catfish are built very similarly to channel catfish, but there are some key differences. Blue catfish are, not surprisingly, blue or dark purple on their top and sides with a white underbelly. They have a forked tail like a channel catfish, but the key difference is that their anal fin is rectangular in shape rather than rounded. The average blue catfish that I see on the Tennessee River is about 10 to 20 pounds, whereas a 40 plus pound fish could be considered by many people to be a trophy class fish. The current Alabama state record blue catfish is a whopping 120 pounds and was caught in 2012 at Holt Reservoir in central Alabama. The current world record blue catfish is 143 pounds, which is an absolutely massive catfish, and was caught in 2011 at Bugs Island, which is also called Kerr Lake in Virginia. Blue catfish that reach adulthood are an apex predator. They're an extremely aggressive fish with a ferocious and insatiable appetite. At times they will eat until their stomachs look like they're going to burst. If they can fit a food source into their mouth, they will try to eat it. They're an opportunistic predator and you can count on them being nearby schools of shad or other bait fish. Blue catfish are also omnivorous, but only when they are young. Once they reach adulthood, however, they become exclusively predatory and carnivorous. Food sources for blue catfish consist of both gizzard and threadfin shad, especially wounded or recently killed shad, bluegills and sunfish, freshwater drum, white bass, yellow bass, crappies, clams, and crayfish. Blue catfish follow a similar pattern to channel catfish. In the fall, blue catfish also switch over to feeding mode to prepare for winter, and in the mornings and evenings, they will move up into creeks and flats to actively hunt for bait fish, primarily shad. During the day, blue catfish push into deeper holes or current breaks to rest just outside of the creeks, so focus on those areas during those times. In the winter, blue catfish will also push into deep water to avoid the cold air. They also will still feed, but their metabolism slows way down, and they won't travel far to feed as they try to conserve energy, just like channel catfish. However, during the winter, because comfortable water will be scarce, so once you find it, you will find a lot of blue catfish in one area. It makes finding trophy catfish easier. Winter is, in my opinion, the best time to catch monster blue cats. In the springtime, the blue catfish bite will follow a pattern almost identical to fall time. Focus on creek mouths in the morning and evening, but be aware that the blue catfish will occupy deeper water during the day to rest. Blue catfish typically spawn in late May or early June in Alabama, and they become scarce and very difficult to catch during that time. During the summer post-spawn, blue catfish will occupy very deep water during the day, but they will move out to feed in the creeks and on the flats under cover of darkness. Last but certainly not least is the mule of the freshwater fishing world, the flathead catfish. Flathead catfish are incredibly powerful, tireless fighters. They will test your metal and your gear when you hook into a trophy-sized flathead catfish. Flathead catfish have a brown body with yellow patterns. They have a large, wide, flat head, hence the name, and a rounded tail. The average flathead catfish that I see on the Tennessee River is about 15 to 20 pounds. A 30 plus pound fish could be considered to be a trophy class flathead catfish. The current Alabama state record flathead catfish is 80 pounds and was caught in 1986 in the Alabama River near Selma. The current world record flathead catfish is 123 pounds and it was caught in 1998 at Elk City Reservoir in Kansas. An absolute apex predator. They're primarily a nocturnal feeder through most of the year, and they actively hunt schools of shad and bait fish during those times. This does not mean that you can only catch flatted catfish at night. It merely means that hours of darkness are when they're actively moving about and feeding. During the day, they usually occupy deep, heavy cover where they rest. Live bait can give a catfish from an edge with flathead catfish or at a minimal use fresh cut bait.
Flathead catfish have the same diet as blue catfish with the addition that they will also eat smaller channel catfish. In the late fall, flathead catfish pretty much follow the same pattern as blue catfish and you will catch both species in the same zones. In the winter, when the water drops in the mid to low 40s, flathead catfish become very scarce and hard to catch. It's not impossible to catch them, but it becomes much more of a rarity as flatheads occupy very deep water and become very inactive. In the springtime, the flathead catfish go into gorge mode and the bite becomes very hot. The flatheads need to recover their lost body mass from the winter and they will move up into the creeks to feed. Target creek mouths or ledges between creeks as flatheads will use them as a highway to move back and forth between food sources. This is one of the times in the year where you can catch flatheads day or night as they feed so heavily. During the summer post spawn, flathead catfish will also occupy very deep water during the day, but they will move out to feed in the creeks and on the flats under cover of darkness. Occupy creek mouths in the early mornings or as the sun starts to set as flathead catfish will pass through them in order to feed up in the creeks. All right, so that's going to wrap us up for this episode of Catfish Combat. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it's, again, it's a little bit different than what I've been doing. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please hit subscribe and like. I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, also, to all of you who have already liked and subscribed, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Love each and every one of you guys. You guys keep me motivated, keep me in this fight. Um, yeah, so I hope that uh, I hope you guys got something out of this today that was worth your while. And uh, just remember, today is the day that the Lord has made. Stay on mission for Him. God bless and take care.